yeah. all right let's get started yeah wait should i hit the thing? hit the thing hit the thing ladies and gentlemen movies with mark mark I can't get over that theme music. It really feels like somebody has their finger on the on the disc, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> slowing it down. Um, hi, how are you? Doing Good. well. How are you? What's it like there in Wisconsin? Beautiful, beautiful today. today. Is it beautiful? Good. Yeah. Today it is. It's been cold all week, but yeah, to go up to What's sixty-five it? today. Okay, we got up to we got up to actually seventy yesterday. It was really nice. It'll probably it was like summer. Show off. Right. So, um, <laughs> the movie for this week class is The Father, nominated for Academy Awards for Best Picture, for Best Actor Anthony Hopkins, and for Best Actress in a Supporting Role, uh, Olivia Coleman. And nominated for SAG Awards. Uh, they don't do a Best Picture. They just do Acting Awards. So it's Best Male Lead in an Actor. That's how SAG calls it. And Best Female uh, Supporting, Best Female Actor in a Supporting Role. I like the, I think it's interesting to take note of the differences of the language that SAG and, and the Academy uses. They The Academy uses Actress. The uh, Screen Actors Guild uses female actor, so they're more gender specific. I don't know what's the right way to do it, but anyway, it's an interesting little yeah. aside. Yeah. It's worth noting. Worth well, noting. I've always yeah. thought that the female was the actress and the male the actor, but it seems like it's changed quite a bit. You know. Well, it's pretty. It seems. It seems to me. I was surprised when I looked at the account and saw specifically read what the academy wrote because it seems as though almost universally now an actor or an actress is referred to as an actor yeah there's no gender specificity about that word it's it's the job to act and if you act you're an actor so male or female which seems uh more equitable to me somehow but yeah. so I don't know. It's interesting. The Academy Awards is odd because they want to keep a tradition, but they also want to be progressive, and that kind right. of cuts each other. Yeah, and it takes them a while. Especially, it takes the Academy a while to catch up. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, witness the fact that yeah. Anyway, there's all kinds of things you can get into right. about why are they why the Academy is so backward. Just uh, it's overwhelmingly actors in terms of membership. So actors like Kevin Costner, Mel Gibson, Clint Eastwood often win the directorial award because they're actors, because they've gotten more people in their clan, as it were, or in their tribe. But anyway, all that aside, this is the movie The Father. Mm -hmm. uh, Olivia Coleman is the daughter. Anthony Hopkins is the father. And it's about a man who has... I don't can't remember if it's specified whether he has Alzheimer's specifically or just dementia, but he very definitely has dementia. But he's not quite willing to admit it yet or live with it yet or have the ability to recognize it. Yeah, I guess that's the, that actually probably is a better way of putting it. But he he doesn't. Yeah, he doesn't. That part of self-recognition is gone what i find fast and there have been a, quite a few movies going back to that great julie christie movie uh i can't remember the name of and still alice is one that julie uh julianne moore made i think and uh there have been several people making may have made films about dementia about alzheimer's and that's probably because such a large population but it's a large portion of the population is uh, of that age where that it's becoming a critical something we have to think about. I mean, I know I've been doing promotional work for the Alzheimer's Association for probably 10 years. I did a lot when I was in Milwaukee. 
and my gramps is going through that real bad right now. Yeah. Yeah, and and almost everybody by this time, I'm sorry, is she in a in a in a home or an institution? Oh, my gramps. Or... No, my gramps yeah. is very much like Anthony Hopkins. He's oh yeah. He's very stubborn, stubborn old German. Which a uh, little fun story about my gramps doesn't have a phone now because my uncle Chris lives next door and makes dinner for him every day. And he uh -huh. called him and said, I'm bringing over dinner. And my gramps said, okay, I got to heat up dinner. And he put his cell phone in the microwave <laughs> and turned it <laughs> on. <laughs> and then my uncle comes over with the dinner and he's like, what's that smell? Oh, I was heating up dinner. I'm like, no, you're heating up the phone. <laughs> <That you're... laughs> so he so... currently still lives by himself, but his son is right next door to him lives right, he's right next door so comes and takes care of him. well that's good that's a nice arrangement and that, that he doesn't wander off and put himself in danger they're not fearful yes. of that yes he does <laughs> but he gets stung by 80 bees last year because he decided he wanted to mow the lawn ran well, over that, a bee's nest that was before that was just him he was to be he's, it's a long steady decline well, like with a yeah. lawnmower too? Yeah. Oh, oh, that's not a good thing. He, he ran it over with the lawnmower, but what saved him is that he left the lawnmower running over the nest, so that distracted them, and he was... And they live on a lake, so he yeah. just ran into the lake. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the mower ran. Um, how cool? long has it been going on? When was he? How long ago was he diagnosed? I don't even know if he is diagnosed, but yes, he definitely has it. Um, it's like It's a slow decline, you know? Well, getting back to the movie though, because yeah. this is a it, it, first off, that's, that's why a heavy, home. Yeah. a heavy duty subject. But I remember what you said. You said that you can see what he's experiencing, and I thought that was brilliant because, unless I'm mistaken, when the he goes and he sees this guy sitting in his living room, and he's like, "Who are you?" And I'm your daughter's husband. No, my daughter is moving to France. She just told me the other day, and he goes, no, we've been married for like 10 years. And the daughter comes home, and it's a different woman. Right. And he that, doesn't recognize her. Well, and then you kind of like, this is what he's experiencing. Right. That's Yeah, that's the kind of wonderful thing about the movie is it really, it, it takes us through, as the audience, we follow Hopkins character, the character with dementia. And we perceive, we see things from his point of view where things are just confusing that you don't look like the person that was here yesterday that claims she's my daughter. And how do I believe, why should I believe you? Yeah. It's and it, and it becomes very disorienting at first because uh -huh. you don't know what's, what's real, what's really happening in the movie and what is imagined. And it's, uh, it's, it's very, it's disturbing. And I think it's part of the wonderful, the wonderful thing about the movie is it really allows you to experience life or the life of this movie from the point of view of a of a person with dementia yeah. and uh and it's very and you cry with him when he yeah. asks begs for his mama uh, at the in the last uh the last minute when he you know goes back to an infantile state yeah. almost no concept of time so yeah i just thought of something because what? i only watched it the once and it, it was it, not only just confusing as far as that, but the time, it the time jumps back and forth and it stuff loops around and the, the time's all messed up in his head. But that one scene where the daughter comes home and it's a different actress. Right. Like recognize her. Was that the same actress that at the end was his nurse that's yes. taking care of him? Yes. Her? Yes. Yes, so it was, was. Was he like in his head? Like He may have been kind of in that room the whole movie. Because that's that's yeah, I think that's part of the point, the way justification for what we've just experienced is, yeah, he he may be in the institution, in the home yeah. with the nurse the whole time. And everything he experiences and is just the way he rem yeah, just where he remembers it. He's recurring because I think there was some stuff in there that was true. And it's just the stuff coming back at different times for him. And that's probably they probably do experience that because the, the husband at some points was. The, the guy from the group home. Yeah, there right. were different husbands as well. I thought the, yeah. the women were angelic the way they treated him and the guys were horrible. Yeah. Horrible. And then the guy, when he keeps slapping him, it was so hard to watch but because did, it's like he forgot how to hit back. Did that really happen, though? I don't yeah. know. 
He forgot. How to, just he, feel that he didn't remember how to be a tattletale. It's like he said nothing. He just took it. And she knew he was upset and he didn't speak up for himself. And it broke my heart to see him in that condition. It was just like, he, man, I tell you what, one of the best actors I've ever, ever seen, Anthony Hopkins. His acting in this was. He's amazing. Really good. Yeah, it really, I mean, it's a real showpiece for him. There, there are times when I think he's really showing off how good an actor he is, which I don't necessarily like, but he really is a great actor. And he makes tremendous choices, and it's every inch of his body is invested in it. When he's an infant crying at the end, or when he's, when he's asking for his mother, the way his shoulders go up are exactly the way a child's shoulders go up when they're crying. It's it, yeah, there's some really brilliant physical stuff and just choices, observational stuff yeah. that he does. It's a great, great performance. And I'm, I have no doubt but that he'll win everything, I think. I hope so. It's interesting how they showed the stress on the family dealing with this, too. And when do you come to the point, like the lady moved to France, when is it okay to abandon him? Because if he has no concept of time or recollection, are you? is it really that bad to move on with your life, which they probably would have wanted? Right. You know, that's when do you say you can't <laughs> live with us anymore or we have to put you in a home because you don't even recognize me. So what's the point of being with your family if you don't even know your family's taking because care of you. Because your family has an obligation to take care of you, I believe, instead of sticking you in a home. Unless they can't, you get to the point where they physically can't do it. I mean, if you've taken care of your children and then you get to a point where you can't take care of yourself, mm -hmm. I would feel obligated to at least as long as I could to keep them with me. Well, you got to understand their wishes too. Would Anthony Hopkins want to be that much of a burden to his daughter if it doesn't matter if she's there or not because he's not even remembering at that point. It's that's a tough, like, yeah, it's a tough discussion. It's a tough decision because, you know, at this point, she's put everything aside. She, I think, through the pieces of the movie, she probably it ruined her marriage, mm -hmm. yes, with, with this husband. And then that's why she moved to end up ended up moving to Paris, finding someone else. I think. You know, it ruined her marriage. It, it it made a huge strain on her health and her mental, you know, well being. And I, but what? It's hard. What do you she do? She was wonderful in that part too. And the she's thing, great in that part. She has a she's a grandpa. phenomenal actress. Yeah, sorry. My grandpa and Anthony Hopkins in here. They do go through bouts of anger and fits of rage. Oh yeah. So yeah, that's natural. You, you can't put up with that. You know. You well, need. they're frustrated with themselves for not knowing what's going on and for everyone telling them that what they in their mind knows is going on isn't just to relate to another uh story with my grandpa uh he was always missing his watch in the movie yeah. and thinking somebody yeah. it. so my grandpa has this beautiful gun and sword collection and he thought that my uncle chris and my dad were picking out which stuff they wanted when he died so he's and they weren't but he's like, I vacuum the carpet a certain way so I can see footprints and everything. So I know oh, that comes through my house. And yeah. I know you guys have been eyeing my stuff. Then as a joke, my Uncle Chris and dad got green and yellow dots. And they put them on everything. And then there was a key <laughs> that said Andy and Chris. <laughs> like they were, <laughs> like they they were, were it up. putting dibs on it. Just to mess with them. But they probably shouldn't have done that. <laughs> How did he react to that? Yeah, he wasn't happy. <laughs> I'll bet. Now, I was thinking about your grandfather. Can you just remove the amp ammunition from the house so that, I mean, if you're if you're fearful that he has a gun collection and he could, he's going off the rails enough, off mm -hmm. the rails, there we are, yeah. um, that he might actually use the guns. Can you remove the ammunition so he's not really a threat? My Uncle Chris has removed the ammunition and he has removed the something on the car so his van won't start yeah anymore. i'm sure that's the first thing he did is is removed all that stuff out of some the cap <laughs> yeah on something he's taken the caps off so he can't oh the, the car the, the thing that's on the top of the spark plugs is what you usually remove if you want a car not to be able to go anywhere yeah, yeah so he's done that to my gramps's van okay 
Good. But now my gramps uh, just showed up with a bike somewhere, and now he rides around the lake. Well, as he's getting exercise, that's good. Exercise is good. <laughs> uh, creative things they've found, too. Music, playing music or listening to music is really good. If only to uh, uh, painting is good. I had a friend in Milwaukee who did a uh, a play in the Alzheimer's wing at, um, what's the Lutheran home that's out there? west of town a little bit i can't remember what to call them but anyway did a play uh sort of the female point of view of um the odysseus uh the uh, ulysses uh mm-hmm. legend from penelope's point of view waiting at home for her husband to come home and uh that was very helpful i mean anything you can do that sort of stimulates you, you can't bring somebody back from alzheimer's but you can make their time better yeah, and you really get, and it is. It's like Molly said. It's a, it's very. What do you do? It's a very difficult question because you you have to be selfish to the point of saving your own life and having your own life. If you meet someone and you fall in love with them and they're moving to Paris and you have to put your father in a home so that you can move to Paris so you can have a life. I mean, if I he don't no short term memory. There's basically no reason for you to be there. He's not going to. You know, your short-term memory is gone. Uh, what the problem? Is the problem you always you have to live with is that it's not there. It's not like a light switch. The short-term memory doesn't go off, and this stays off. I mean, it comes and goes. And the and the person with Alzheimer's or with dementia has good moments and bad moments. And if you abandon them and you're not there for the good moments, what do they do? You miss all those good moments and all that time. I think I said last week, I was I had just read when we talked about doing the father, somebody's statement about Alzheimer's or about dementia, about how everybody gets in. I get to a point in my life, my everyday life sometimes, where I just say, what the fuck is going on? And I don't know. Yeah. And uh, it, Alzheimer's is a little bit like that. So you can say, what the fuck is going on? And just take what comes. My ex-mother-in-law suffers from uh, dementia and uh, she's really happy much of the time. Other times she's completely thousand yard stare in the distance, whether she's remembering or trying to remember or looking at an empty future or whatever, I don't know. But it is, when we say it's agonizing, it's agonizing for us. Right. But it isn't always necessarily agonizing for the person with dementia. What I learned in my adult aging class for psychology was the slow onset of Alzheimer's. uh, People adapt to that and hide that they don't remember something. Or you could see Anthony Hopkins going, oh, oh, that's who you are. Oh, yeah. Right. But he's faking it. Yeah. He so. couldn't fake that watch, though. He kept misplacing that damn watch all through Just the leave movie. It it's like- well, he would, yeah, he'd forget where that he put it somewhere. He had his secret place and had to be reminded of his secret place. And then he'd do it. My, again, my, uh, my mother in law, who's one really dear, sweet woman, was sitting with my ex wife after they were let them out. Uh, they, they used to have to sit and talk to them through glass during COVID. Uh, through the window, so Iris would sit inside, and every, the family would come and sit outside and talk to her on the phone. But they let her sit out, and so but they had to wear masks. So they were sitting out in the lawn on a nice day last summer, and Iris was just looking at, staring at Libby, at my ex-wife Libby, uh, and smiling and so happy. And she said at one point, she said, "Libby," and my ex-wife thought at the moment thought. My God, she remembers me. She knows who I am because everybody's been going along with the, the realization that she doesn't really know who anybody is. She's just happy to see a smiling, friendly face. And then Libby realized after she got home and took her mask off that she was wearing a Libby Montana because she owns a restaurant, Libby Montana, a Libby Montana mask. And that her mom was probably just reading what it said on the mask. Oh. So she didn't really recognize her, but maybe she did, maybe she didn't. It doesn't really matter because she was feeling at the time really good. Mm-hmm. I mean, you somehow sometimes just have to sort of take it 
take life, this whole thing that we go through uh, at face value and whatever you're getting, that's good. But I don't know. It's but it is. I think it's a brilliant movie. It really makes you feel something about Alzheimer's. Now I'm sure there are students of the disease, and students of the behavior that may quibble with it. I haven't read anything anybody quibbling, finding, oh that doesn't happen. That would never happen. He would never do that. Uh, as I think it, I think it honors and respects the disease all the way down the line. I. I think it does, but I don't really know enough to know. It affects everybody different. So one person's right. interpretation can't be wrong, you know. Right. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, and, and happy with that new caretaker too. Like he reminded him of his other daughter. Who? Who was she? The other daughter. She must, she have, must died. have died in a, an accident. Okay. Yeah, like she's that. the one that died in the accident. We see just for a moment in traction in the hospital bed, right? Oh, I just thought it was his imagination. I get no, it. Every because time he heard her saying his name. Yeah, go ahead. Every time he brought her up, everyone else kind of just Avoided. quieted down. And then at one point, the caretaker said, oh, you know, your daughter told me about her. I'm so sorry. And then he got really upset. So right. He to relive that shock every yeah. time. Right. Every yeah. day. You know. He's better off just thinking that she's out there somewhere. and She never comes to visit. Yeah. <laughs> It's kind of hard. But that, I mean, again, that's the decision. If you have a relative or somebody who has it, what do you, if you can afford a home, they're liable to get more consistent one-on-one -on -one care. And and the people who work in those, I mean, I'm sure there are horrible people who work in those those things. There are horrible people who do everything. Yeah. But uh, for the most part, I think I think the people who are hospice nurses. And the people who work with Alzheimer's patients are the great heroes of uh, of our time. Not the COVID times, but uh, they do something that I could never do. Yeah, uh, I'm just not that generous. It's that, that emotionally, psychologically generous. I just couldn't do it. It's got to be so hard. I don't think I could either, but more because... You would get so attached to these people, you know. Well, yeah. Learning for them and and learning their life story, getting yeah. to them, but knowing that they don't have, you know, as much time left, and then seeing them, seeing them pass on after. Yeah. To them. Yeah, that's as hard as uh, being a pediatric oncology nurse or pedi uh, pediatric oncology doctor, where you've got kids that have cancer and are going to die. But they, they're they showing you every, sometimes, some of them are showing you every day how brave they can be. And uh, yeah, but yeah. Yeah, it's, I couldn't do it. It's hard, but I'm glad there are people who can, who are built that way. Yeah. Who can do it. Damn you and all these feelings, Mark. <laughs> yeah, see? All these feelings. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it, yeah. I mean, why, why watch why watch uh, the father and get depressed? Because as I say, I, I suspect that almost every one of us now has some relative or friend or has, has some experience with Alzheimer's or with, with dementia of some sort. I mean, it used to be everybody's grandpa at Thanksgiving dinner, the guy who was sitting in the rocker in the corner staring out the window, and people would just say, oh, he's senile or he's right. slow or, oh, that's Grandpa Joe. Um, and roll their eyes, uh, probably had dementia, but you know, he was, they brought him his little plate of turkey and stuffing and he'd sit in the corner with a TV tray in front of him and stare out the window while everybody else was having a good time. And I don't know, we, we've gone through a lot. Now we have a name for it. Uh, Alzheimer's, we dementia. There's different various kinds of dementia. My grandmother suffered from what they called uh, senile psychosis where it just she had a stroke and she just sort of went mad and uh lived for seven years in this not a vegetative state she was furious she would scream and yell i talk about anger anger goes along with it a lot whether it's frustration of not remembering and knowing in the face by when you look in the faces of the people that are sitting around you that you don't remember because that's the other thing when you go to visit your grandmother or your brother who has alzheimer's uh how do you act you really have to put on a you really have to make it about them and not about you you can't go in there stricken 
like my friend Joan Hackett, when she was dying of cancer, wouldn't let anybody come and visit her who, who she could see on their face was visiting her because she was dying. Because as far as she was concerned, she was living. She was living right up until the point she was dead. I'm still and she didn't want anybody coming in saying, oh, God, you're dying. I'm sorry. She wanted people to come in and say, so did you hear about Mary? She wanted to share the gossip. She wanted to do, she wanted to be alive, be treated like she was alive. And I think you've got to do that with As Al Alzheimer's people too, in some way. Yeah. Well, my, I don't know what's hard. my best friend growing up, he was an only child and um, his mother had Alzheimer's and she was in a home and he lived down in Louisiana and I went to visit and I hadn't seen her for a number of years. This is a woman I've known since I'm four years old the sweetest lady. I mean, like uh, she was like family. I went to see her and she didn't recognize me. And she uh, goes, I said, you remember who I am? And she goes, your face is kind of familiar. And it's like, no, I don't think so. And as we're walking out of her room, just going on a little walk, she said, William, and you have two sons. It came to her who I was. All right. Oh, good. Moment of lucidity. And then so she said to me, she said, I lost my glasses. I don't know. They were going to repair them or something, and they hadn't brought them back. And so my friend's all mad at her. You're always losing your glasses. I'm like, calm down. So we're walking, and they gave her her glasses at the nursing station. They had repaired them. So she puts them on, and as we're walking a little further, there's a lady in the wheelchair, and she goes, are those my glasses? Uh -huh. No, I don't think so. And she goes, may I see them? And my friend's like, don't give it a glance. I'm like, let her try them on and see if they're hers. So she took the glasses and she put them on. She goes, oh, you're right. These aren't my glasses. And she gave them back. It's like, sometimes you just have to be a little bit patient. And sometimes. Oh, you yeah. Little, you, and, and like you say, people have to have a special kind of person to be able to do that type of work day in and day out and deal with that and deal with death. You know, it's like you said, you couldn't do it. I don't think I could do it either. Yeah. Uh, well, okay. it, it, it can't be about you. It's like with it when you're with a child, an infant, too. It can't be about you. It's got to be about it's about the child. Everything. The rules are made up the moment by moment by the infant. And just I think when you're mewling and puking, puking like an infant in the seven ages of man, as Jaques and As You Like It says that the seventh age of man is just like the first age of man when you're mewling and puking. In your mother's arms, you're just you're an old, old man who can barely walk and uh, drools down your chin. You uh, you just have to give them that. They have to be the boss. And if yeah, if she wants to try on the glasses, what's the harm? And it it allows her to finish the gestalt, to finish to pass through, rather than being told no. We have to, I did a, when I lived in Milwaukee, I did a whole podcast, a series. I did a podcast uh, for Third Coast Digest and I did a series on Alzheimer's and focused primarily on the caregivers because I think the caregivers are the overlooked ones because like, he's, I, like I said, Molly said, we couldn't, we couldn't do it. I don't think I'm built that way. Uh, if my mother and my father had lived and had had Alzheimer's, I'd would have put them in a home. They could have afforded it. And I would have put them in a home and I would have visited. And at some point I might have moved to Paris uh, because I would have realized that they didn't really need to see me because when they saw me, they didn't know who I was. And it's not about me, it's about them. So if the nurses are good and the doctors are good and she's being taken care of and the bills are being paid, Iris wouldn't rather many times would rather stay and eat even by herself in the little cafeteria and little dining room at the home that she's in rather than go out with her daughters because to have a burger at Sally's or something like that because when you go out it's so stressful and it's it's actually safer and more comfortable to do that routine of just I walk from my room and I go down and I'll have dinner and the, somebody waits on me because they have it's a nice little place where actually a waiter will come and a waitress will come and a nurse will come and take your order. I don't know. It's a hard decision to make. You got to make the decision for them rather than for you. Yeah. Anyway, I thought but, the daughter's husband was far too handsome to be in that relationship. Which husband, though? <laughs> the handsome one. <laughs> <laughs> 
she comes was, with all this baggage. Nah, he could do better. That's why he was kind of a jerk, though. And he, they were all he was jerks. Tired of it. I well, I know, but you I know really, what? I I was distracted because I recognized him from uh, he played like the bad guy in a Night's Tale. <laughs> oh yeah, he was. I love that movie. Wait, yeah, where where do I know him from? What movie? He a was Knight's in a Night's Tale, the one with Heath Ledger. He was like the bad guy. Oh, okay. Oh, with Heath. Okay. Oh, all right. All right. Yeah, he's been around a long time, and he hasn't changed much at all, has he? He's just as handsome now as he was 20 years ago. Yep. Yeah. He's, he's said something him. wrong with him. So, Tom, I want to go back to this, though, because there's a real sort of interesting misogyny there. So you thought he was too handsome to be married to Olivia Coleman, so you're kind of, in a way, body-shaming Olivia Coleman, huh? She was all stressed out. Came with a lot of baggage. He was <laughs> but the character in that woman, though, and the way that she just persevered, was that the actress that was in The Crown? Was she one of the yeah, definitely. Of the queen? That's what I thought I recognized her from. I just, I, I get what you're saying, but like, I, it did make it seem like they weren't a natural pair. I mean, no. she's got some great qualities, man. Did it's you notice her everything. hairstyle changing too? Well, yeah. But at the end, it was just short, and I'm not even going to do my hair anymore. Oh. She was so stressed. Yeah, all the strain that she'd been under. And my husband's like, I liked your hair when it was long and nice. <laughs> but she ain't got time. She's got to deal with the old man. She don't even take care of herself anymore. Right. Tom is obsessed like, I'm with hairstyles. <laughs> I'm out of here. Sorry, babe. <laughs> Go meet some Frenchmen. They don't even speak English there. I, that's what I heard. A few times. Yep. They don't even speak English. He said that quite a few times. <laughs> yeah, it's France. <laughs> but only, yeah. when you were talking about the music, though, because that was very important to him. Like, even oh, yeah. the dementia, the music was something that kind of took him away and then he enjoyed it. So, yeah, there's a, there's, a, there's a scene, isn't there, where he sits at the piano and plays something? Or am I remembering something else? Because they've, they've, they've done a lot of studies and they've worked. And, and if, you, if you have experience with an instrument, that doesn't necessarily go away. You may not be able to play all of Rachmaninoff's fourth, but you can play what you can play. Muscle. And that it really, it's very soothing. And it actually uh, helps you remember, not that the effort should be with an Alzheimer's patient to make them remember. It's not really important that they remember who, you know, right. who their second husband was. I, yeah. I, don't, I don't know. Playing piano, Why? You don't either. I remember him tap dancing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he convinced the caregiver that he was a tap, a tap dancer. dancer. Oh, your uncle, did, your uh, grandpa did? No, no the Anthony movie, Hopkins. Anthony Hopkins. I'm a dancer. Oh, he did, didn't he? That's right. I forgot. I forget little details like that. Yeah, there's so much great stuff. But it's a, so let's talk about for a minute about the difference, just from a technical point of view, the difference between the two performances Hopkins, who's nominated for Best Actor, and Olivia Coleman, who's nominated for Best Supporting Female in a Supporting Role. Um, it's very different kinds of acting. I mean, Hopkins is very, is really technical, really good, really observed. He, he every moment it's like you can you can see i feel like i can see the creative mind of the artist working mm -hmm. like like i can see him making the decision to cry the way he cries at the end i can see him making decisions about uh, this is a when he's talking about tap dancing with everybody with olivia coleman I don't see those decisions. I just see an emotional, you say she's uh, too much baggage, but the wonderful thing I think about Olivia Coleman is that everything she's feeling, you see on her face. Yeah. And when she, she, if she's trying to make it through, she's trying to make it through, you see this great face, and then you can see that face completely fall apart as she falls apart. And it's a, it, 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 it's a different kind of acting. It's just not, I don't find yeah, it nearly as technical. Well, I have a good take on this. You okay. ever watch the Olympics gymnastic routines? <clears throat> yeah. The difficulty is set before you start. And a different person right. can do a routine that has a more higher maximum difficulty. Right. 
So okay. there could be mistakes. They get knocked off. But if you do yours perfect, you can only get 16.7. But they're doing a difficult routine. They can get 18.1, right? Right. I think um, her character had less of a difficulty maximum right. score than Anthony Hopkins because it is 2021. Uh, you could grab just about anybody out of their house right now and make them look as stressed out as she was. Because <laughs> that was kind of <laughs> cool. was just look disheveled and stressed when playing an Alzheimer's patient has a higher difficulty range well, it's something and even though they both nailed their routines i think anthony hopkins gets the nod just for a higher difficulty of acting well, well I mean, you're, you're right in the point i mean anthony hopkins has never personally experienced well he's pretty old maybe he didn't even know he did the movie and they just, <laughs> maybe <why? laughs> it was live action <laughs> well he he has he has said that it's very close to him and i think anybody who, who gets to be the age he gets <laughs> no matter how successful he's been yeah. has moments like that mm -hmm. and has, has the fear. I mean, I know one of the reasons I started working with, with Alzheimer's association back in Milwaukee was because it was, it was and continues to be a great sort of on almost unrecognizable fear that I will go off the rails that way that I will lose track of, who the people around me are and where I am. And, and uh, I'm constant, I constantly check myself. So I don't think Hopkins is, is unacquainted with it. I mean, I suspect he's had friends who have had Alzheimer's, um, yeah. known people uh, that have had Alzheimer's. And uh, so, yeah, so it, it's not like it's, it's not like it's just a job to him. It's personal to him too. It just, that's, and I'm not talking about who wins the the uh, who's who does the better job yeah. okay. of acting? She does a very good job of doing an excellent job of what she's doing, and he does an excellent job. I'm talking about the way it's done, and it's more. I find Hopkins to be a little bit colder, more techni technical, more calculated, and I find her to be more of a of a raw nerve. And I kind of like the raw nerve part. Uh, style better acting i mean go ahead you talk i'm talking too much i was just gonna say it was interesting to see like it wasn't just oh you went silent molly oh, she's silent you can't hear she's me? silent now i can hear you oh it, it wasn't just the frustration um that she was portraying she was portraying just that whole mix of emotions the frustration but also you know the love and care and concern right. like all at once you could see it all going through her face and uh, and and because and because we're witnessing the movie through his eyes she also had to play almost like a different character in different scenes when she's mm -hmm. going through the same scene but from a different a different a way he remembers it slightly differently she has to always be playing who he imagines, which is a, a technical thing, but she, I don't know. I think Olivia Coleman is just magnificent. Yeah, they did have a lot of laughing fun times too at the dinner table and in the elevator and stuff. And yeah. Yeah. Hey, she never got fed up with him though. I mean, like she was always, well, you not, yeah. always caring. I mean, like you never like, doubt that she loves him. Absolutely. And he rips even when, yes. What? He rips rips her apart too. That she's not his favorite, and she's always dumb, forgetting things. And yeah, my yeah. other daughter's yeah. the good one. And she has to yeah. sit and take it. People have written that there's there are so echoes of. I, apparently, I didn't see it, but Hopkins did a King Lear. <coughs> excuse me, on stage in London. That was quite wonderful, and there's a lot of King Lear in this. People have written about it. Just the. The two two daughters. Lear has three daughters. One is a really, really, really good daughter that he that doesn't tell him how much she loves him in the way he wants to hear it. So he abandons her and goes with the two bad daughters. But uh, this the way the way the king remembers who loves him and how they love him is interesting. That anyway. Hmm. Yes. This could be Sorry, a, I've got a little this. bit of a horror movie because last week. I, I packed up my computer here, and then I'm like, oh, I got to put my coat on, set my computer down, put my coat on, went home. I forgot uh -huh. that. And then instantly, I started thinking about my grandpa like, that's my future. 
oh no, it's starting. You know, yeah. they forgot something and those little things that always, the more you see uh, someone in your family, your genetic line going downhill, you're like, crap, that's my future. They better cure this stuff. <laughs> I still can't find my watch. I, it's gone. I don't know what happened to oh, it. Oh, the lady stole it. <laughs> the cleaning lady. Yeah. yeah, she took it. Man, it's in that it's in that secret place under your bed. Secret place. <laughs> I do that stuff all the time, though, and I'll misplace something. I'll put it somewhere where I thought was a good place to put it. I'll misplace it for like months, and then I'll find it and go, "Oh, okay." Yeah, you know Tom's moving it on you. No. He's, yes. Is he gaslighting you? I can believe that he would, but no, because when I find it, I remember. Oh, and yeah. you left it there? Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Well, yeah. More rankings. Yeah, let's go around. Yeah, go ahead. Ladies first. Who wants to start? You're going to start with me? Molly can start. Yeah. Would you rather not? Don't this, give her that option. This there you one's go. a tough one for me because... I really enjoyed the performances. It was a tough movie to watch because it was just, it was so real. Um, I don't know if I'd give it a five, though. I might give it like a four or a four and a half. But I feel I, bad. I respect that. I like, I get that. I, I think we give, a, I, I know I give fives away really easily, too easily. I I, I thought about that too. I I felt like I wouldn't. I don't know that I could give this one a five. I would. I feel like I should give it maybe a four or four and a half, something other than a five, just because I toss fives out. Yeah. And I don't know that this movie, as good as it is, as great as the performances are, I don't know if this movie will stand the test of time or last or go down through history. It's not a great movie. You don't it's not watch it again. Right. No, That's don't. what I was going to say. It's an, it's, I think it's an important people to watch view. for people to yeah. watch because it does give you a little bit more insight. It's, it's a greatly done movie, I think. But yeah. I was sitting here thinking I would have to watch it again to try to piece together, but I don't really want to watch it again. <laughs> I don't. I know. It's disturbing. It's a heavy yeah. subject. And it's close to home with you guys. Yeah. So I think. Yeah. Four. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah, rewatchability's got to knock it down a little bit. Um, but I'm going to give it a four and a half because it does hit home. And maybe when my gramps is being a dick to somebody, maybe they saw this movie and they'll cut them some slack. <laughs> so um, I would actually give it a four myself, even though I thought it was a very powerful performances by Olivia Coleman. I want to see more by her and Anthony Hopkins. Forget about it. I think that's Oscar worthy. The problem is I wouldn't want to watch it again. And I also thought the men in that movie were portrayed horribly. And for that, it's like, it just seems like, a, yeah, it's rubs me the wrong way. It seems like men are really being portrayed horribly in a lot of movies these days. And I'm against that. There are good. Well, men. you're against it. Really? Well, well, men, you know, men have historically behaved pretty horribly. <laughs> Historically, but there are good men now that are living in oh, this yeah. world, and and I don't like seeing them all portrayed horribly. I mean, like all of those guys, except maybe the first guy, he wasn't that bad, but they were all terrible, including Anthony Hopkins. And the women were wonderful, and it just like <laughs> it really did. It's like the guys are not all bad. Well, that goes to why ninety five percent of nurses are women. They're just the more caring and that was my secret at uh when i went to uwm if i ever had to take a dump i went to the school of nursing because you could just crap with the door open no one was bothering you in the men's room <laughs> it was at this building too <laughs> no with the doesn't. lights off and the door open who knows yep <laughs> nobody bothered you tom because of the sounds you were making while you were <laughs> and the smells <laughs> and the smell that's right we don't go in there uh, across campus. Dude, go across campus to avoid it yeah. <laughs> like, so mark me. did you give your final no he did not i would get uh, since somebody gave it a 4.5 and somebody gave it a four i'm going to give it a 4.25 all right <laughs> just four. to uh, just to be different and to split the middle and make the math harder to come out with an average because as i said i don't know that it's a great movie it's really good i think people everybody should watch it 
to see it, to see, to get an, see an, what an example of really great virtuosic uh, performance acting can be like, and also to see what it feels like to have Alzheimer's or to be slipping into it. And I know it's hard to watch it again, but I think it's important to maybe watch it again to see. I watched it twice now, and I think I got, I don't know if I got, I think I did get more from it the second time. I got more relief from it the second time. The first time it was just really hard, but the second time because I was going through it again and not because I was able to sort of protect myself, but just because I realized the inevitability of certain things it made it a little less stressful the second time. Uh, and I think it will, I think there's a way that it can emotionally prepare you for dealing with a relative, a, a, a brother or a, or, a, or a parent or an aunt or an uncle who has Alzheimer's. I think there is a, a value to it there in terms of just how it can emotionally, psychologically prepare you for this event, which will... I don't know what the numbers are, but it will, everybody will at some point deal with dementia, either personally or in a, in a relative or a family friend. Right. And as you say, Tom, it is, it's congenital. My grandmother, my mother, my wife, ex-wife's mother has it. Her father had it. Her sister, I don't know. So it, she, you live with that constant fear, too, as you get older, that uh, you're going to forget your computer at the office. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Or your and then forget where the office is. Yeah. So 4.25. So overall, what at a set of oh, okay. 4.875. 4.875. Oh, good. You did, did, did the math. Did perfect. The math. <laughs> Do the math. Good. All right. Next All week. Right. The uh, field. The field. Two weeks. The two, field. Of the stars. two of the stars from the field Ooh. will be in there in two weeks. That's the 17th of April. We have Tim Higgins in studio along with Mark Metcalf. And so, we'll go over some Oscar stuff maybe on the Facebook page and okay. get everything out there. So.